So this is a short introduction um, about um, the climate analytics service we have installed at DKZ and are providing as a service here. Um, and it's essentially closely associated to a large, large data pool. So this is the key selling point or one of the key selling points um, for, for this. So um, here's a little bit of um, a motivation slide. So um, you as a user normally have big problems to, to analyze the big distributed data which is accessible, um, for example, via ESGF. It's hosted on, on separate nodes in different countries. They are, they are up and down. There are different tools and, and, and transport protocols you can use to access the data. And um, also the download and process at home approach is really no longer really a viable research approach, especially for CMIP6 where the data volumes are so large that the, the a transmission or tran transportation over the over the network is, is is a real bottleneck. So, what we did at DKZ is essentially to to allocate a large data pool. It's accessible uh, under slash pool data slash simip6, and this is essentially by now a five petabyte dedicated pool to host simip6 data. Um, we, so we have automatic application procedures in place to get all the data you need into this pool. And we try really to, to reflect the requirements of the end users so that all the data which is uh, really needed is in this pool. It's not always possible because as you know, CMIP6 is now um, at least 10 petabyte and we have a five petabyte um, pool. But um, yes, this is the limitation we have. Um, and closely associated to this pool, we have um, um, compute resources, so our, our DKZ Mistral system. And you can use this easily just um, by a web browser using this Jupyter Hub uh, instance we have deployed at DKZ. So here you have all the data in the pool at your fingertips. Um, so essentially, the pool is in the um, HPC data store, the same way as any other data you have, like your personal um, home data. It's no, in the normal Lustra storage pool, which is associated to the HPC system. And you can spawn Jupyter Notebooks simply by going to https jupyterhub.tkz.de. And then you are provided with a selection process where you can essentially select the profile you want to use in your Jupyter Notebooks. So you can allocate specific memory and many, many, so some cores uh, which are used to spawn the notebook. And then when it, this is ready, this, this TKZ spawner spawns a notebook specifically for you on the HPC system. So there are diff different allocations there you can use. Some are better if you want to access the internet to uh, get data into your notebooks. Uh, others are, are not accessible from the internet. So there are different profiles for this. Um, one important um, component which makes this very flexible is that um, you can not only use the predefined kernels which are provided as part of our default uh, installation, you can install your own um, Jupyter kernels and Python environments which you normally use in your, your research um, uh, activities. So probably you know this Conda um, packager, which you can use to, to set up um, a, a Python environment. 
So the same way you use Conda to create a Python environment in your home Jupyter notebook environment, you can use also a ticker set. So you can install a specific kernel, make this kernel known to, to, to our system, and then as soon as the notebook has been started, you can select your dedicated kernel to this. So this is a very flexible uh, thing and very important, especially in the early phases where you want to use packages which are not really stable and so on. Um, another important thing is, um, as I said, all the data is in this pool. Five petabytes is a lot of data. So it's we provide a um, possibility to use catalogs to, to search for this data. This will be a key point component of the tutorials to tomorrow. So the um, things we want to, to transport and show today and tomorrow is essentially to get you started to, to efficiently use this environment. We don't want to go too in, uh, in the details of, uh, for example, parallel processing using Dask and so on. So this is an introductionary um, level so that you can easily access the data in our pool. So if you start on Jupyter environment, as I said before, all the data is accessible as you access data normally in, in the file system. So you have your personal space um, where you logged in and then you can also go into this um, CMIP6 data pool under slash pool data slash uh, CMIP6. And you can um, um, navigate there. This is certainly not the optimal way. So what we, what you will learn today uh, and tomorrow is how to use the Intel catalog to, to search in this large data space, in this large hierarchy of, of files, which are stored in, in, in the pool. And you will also learn tomorrow how you then can access the data using, for example, X array and plot it and so on, sub slice it, uh, select uh, parts of it and so on. These are the key things which everybody needs. Um, so what's, what, how the, 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 the catalog looks like. So essentially what you can do is you can load a catalog um, using a simple command. And what you then get is a pandas data frame, which you can use to search. So this is very handy. So you can use declaratively what you want. And then um, the, the, the catalog gives you the references to the data in, in, in this large hierarchy. Um, you need a little bit to um, patience because loading the whole catalog uh, takes takes some some memory. So it's loaded into memory. It's a large uh, data frame which is generated. So this takes some time. So please be aware of this. Um, another thing which is important to mention, namely, if you want just to search in the catalog, um, this catalog is also accessible. Um, it's not only accessible inside the DKZ system, but also using a web URL. So you can load it from your home environment, your laptop at home and see what's in the pool before then going and registering to DKZ and, and doing your analysis there. Um, I already mentioned Pangeo and these intake catalogs are one component in this open source Pangeo ecosystem, which is um, currently used by, by, by many researchers. Um, other components support processing using X-Array or Dask, um, also cloud deployments, so also hosting the data in the cloud using the SAR data format, for example. Um, and especially if you are 
testing and developing, it's also very useful that a lot of data in a growing volume of data is also currently available in the public cloud. So it's on, on Google Cloud. Um, some data we have also um, at the Gazette in our institutional cloud. Um, a press release uh, soon comes out from Amazon Web Services where they also host um, climate data. But you need to be aware that this is just a, a tiny subset of the overall CMIP6. So it's it's much below one petabyte. So it's much less than we have in the five petabyte uh, byte data pool at DKZ. But it's very handy and useful, especially if you want to de develop things and develop your your environments outside uh, outside of DKZ. And as soon as you need really the, the the access to the large amounts of data we host you can smoothly transition from your prototyping environment to, to the environment you then are provided at DKZ. Um, so, as I said, it's handy to, to use this catalog to, to, to search for data. You get a Pandas data frame. And then um, the results of this data can be easily um, loaded and, and manipulated using X-Array. Um, one thing which is important to, to know, uh, to, to, to mention is that you can do a lot of things on the data without really loading all the data into the memory. This, um, as you know, this data is very, has a very high data volume. It's 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 um, costly to to import it and do things on it. So all the data is lazily um, loaded, and you can compose your um, data cube as you want and manipulate it and 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 subset it before actually loading the data. So the, the loading of the data is deferred to the time when you really want to do something with the data, averaging or something, really accessing uh, the data. So the next step normally then is, so you have searched the data, you have opened the data using, for example, X-Array, and then there are different possibilities to, to visualize your, your data. So one, Handy component is matplotlib. Most of people already know this. This is a standard library, but it can be used to 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 have simple plots, but also to provide you and give you an overview of the data before accessing it. So we will mostly um, use matplotlib in the in the um, demos and uh, tomorrow, but we will also use and in introduce some interactive visualization possibilities, for example, using hvplot. Um, so these are very key components. Accessing the data using catalogs, X-Array, and tomorrow you will also learn how to use CDO in the Jupyter environment. Um, but above this, there are more and more higher level community frameworks, which are very valuable for, 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 um, for analysis of, of the data. One of these is this eSymbol tool, which will also be introduced tomorrow. Um, and this is a, is a, is a essentially a framework or, um, 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 yeah, to where you, very often needed um, operations are already implemented in and you compo can compose them in a workflow. So the symbol uh, tool is, is essentially a library of climate analytics workflows. For example, um, a typical workflow would be you start with a specific um, data you want to analyze, you extract the service layer, you do some extraction of a specific region. On this data, you then do some, some analysis, diagnostics, uh, for example, area weighted average over the data, and then you plot it. And these, all these components are already implemented in this framework. And you can 
using declaratively these recipes um, and say the system what um, should be done. And um, so, yeah, so this will be also introduced shortly tomorrow. Um, all our notebooks we will use tomorrow is in, in the GitHub repository, which is linked here. Um, so the basic um, notebooks will be used in the in the demo. There will be also a hands-on session where some partially prepared notebooks um, can be used. But uh, if you're interested, there are also some complex uh, notebooks there, for example, um, in, a multi-model comparison, which is also often done by researchers. So this is essentially the teaser for today. Um, okay, so uh, hello everyone. And I'm uh, Don Donatello Lee, I'm a jury scientist from the Advanced MTV Computing D D Division from the CMCC Foundation. Uh, I'm presenting this on behalf of the ECAST and the uh, OFIDA teams. Uh, at, at, the, at the Advanced Medicative Computing Division at CMCC. In this presentation, I'll give a quick overview of the ECAS instance set up at CMCC and its main integrated services, as well as uh, one of its core components, which has already been mentioned in the previous presentation, which is the Ophelia Data Analytics Framework, and, and show some of the features that will be covered in, the to, in tomorrow's demo. So uh, as introduced in the uh, in previous presentation also by Stefan, uh, the Ines Climate Analytics Service uh, is, is one of the EOS uh, project the thematic services, as well as one of the compute services made available to the users by the ECS3 project. Uh, it has also been extended in the context of uh, EGA's pro uh, um, project uh, to support the uh, ENES data space. Uh, its, its main goal is to support climate data uh, analytics through a parallel service side and in memory uh, approach and address data management challenges, uh, which have been uh, also previously. Uh, uh, we just discussed in previous presentation. CMCC, uh, an instance of the ECAS service, in particular, uh, CMCC instance uh, consists of uh, multiple components centered on the Ophidia High Performance Data Analytics Framework, along with other uh, tools for data sharing and uh, and data access, such as B2Drop and uh, and One Data. Uh, it represents so, a single entry point uh, for uh, uh, to to uh, analysis tools as well as uh, scientific data set. Uh, for example, from the ESGF data archive, and computing uh, re, re resources, providing a cluster which is uh, de designed for data analytics. Uh, ECAS Lab represents uh, a virtual uh, and user friendly research environment built upon the ECAS service and aims to support scientists in their daily uh, re research uh, activities by providing uh, data ana analysis tools and hiding the complexity on the underlying. Uh, infrastructure. It also provides the, uh, uh, the capabilities for implementation execution of uh, interactive and uh, complex experiments, for example, made as uh, workflows, and we'll, we'll see uh, this in a, in a few slides. Uh, it provides a Python-based environment, so it integrates a Jupyter Hub interface for interactive uh, data exp exploration and, uh, and visualization and as well as a wide set of Python uh, scientific modules for data manipulation, analysis, and, uh, and visualization, such as in PyPandas, uh, Matplotlib, and Cartify. And, and it's also allow access to the uh, Ophelia Data Analytics Framework through its, its Python bindings, and uh, all these features can be uh, simply accessed through, uh, through, uh, through a web browser, as uh, also previously mentioned. So tomorrow's uh, demo uh, will show some examples of notebook within the, this environment. Uh, as previously mentioned, the Ophidia uh, framework is one of the core components of the environment. It is a CMCC project addresses scientific data challenges and provides a complete, uh, complete uh, open source high performance data analytics uh, uh, solution supporting scientific application, in particular in the field of, uh, of climate change. Um, it uh, targets uh, high performance data analytics by joining uh, aspects from high performance computing and data an analytics fields. Uh, providing a server-side approach for in-memory and parallel data analysis. It uh, um, implements also an internal and array-based uh, storage model by leveraging the uh, data cube uh, abstraction to uh, efficiently handle uh, multi-dimensional uh, scientific data. And uh, it supports uh, interactive, uh, 
uh, analysis as well as more complex uh, uh, as well as more complex workflow composed of multiple tasks. Uh, so before describing the main features of the uh, framework, uh, I just want to give a brief um, uh, overview of the data challenge which are uh, uh, addressed by Ophidia. Uh, so in particular, at the time that we designed uh, the framework, uh, the, the typical uh, approach which was, which was uh, explored by scientists was to uh, search and uh, and uh, and locate this this data, for example, from uh, um, from system like the uh, Earth System Bit Federation. And then uh, use uh, client the client based tools, uh, let's say desktop based tools to to run the the uh, analysis. These tools are, um, were typically um, and I'll, I'll typically say uh, uh, although, although although providing let's say uh, some 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 degree of uh, of parallel, these tools are typically uh, not able to to scale outside uh, a single node. So their level of uh, of parallelism is uh, is uh, somehow limited. Uh, with this uh, server side shift, the idea was to move the uh, processing on the server side where the where the um, where the data is uh, already available. So let's say at the at the data center or where it can be. Uh, more more easily uh, managed by the by the by the data center team and home, and then uh, exploit the the higher uh, availability of uh, of uh, high performance computing re resources and uh, leaving the, the the user just the need to install very uh, simple client side tools uh, such as in the case of of the of the ecas service simply uh, the user will simply need to, to use a, a web browser to uh, run the uh, decomputation. So this slide shows just some of the requirements uh, that are targeted by the of, of the framework. Uh, so for example, uh, support for time series analysis, i.e. I to put com computing, uh, massive data re reduction, uh, metadata management, uh, Multimodal means and uh, also the support for uh, for data analytics uh, uh, workflows. So this slide shows one of the key aspects of the of, of the framework, which is the server side paradigm. So as you can see in this slide, a user can um, access the of the framework by uh, simply user can access the of the framework by uh, simply. Uh, accessing it through the uh, of, of the terminal, which is uh, similar to a um, bash uh, command line interface, or through the Py of the module, which is the, the of the binary bindings, and then their their request will be uh, sent to, towards the uh, uh, the uh, data center where the uh, where the components which are responsible for the for the computation are uh, are are installed. And so uh, this this mode supports the execution of the different types of uh, processing. So by simply running uh, some some uh, uh, interactive commands like uh, simple operators, or running uh, workflows composed of of uh, hundreds or even thousands of uh, operators, and then the Python applications built with the Py Ophidia module. Uh, the framework has been designed uh, to be uh, to be very very flexible. Uh, so, uh, as can be seen on the on the right side part of this of this slide, it uh, uh, it supports uh, a, a multi-layered architecture, which allows the system to be deployed in uh, in very in very different fashion. Uh, so, they can be adapted, for example, to uh, cloud environments. Yeah. And also, I, I, I uh -huh. and uh, thanks to this uh, to this architecture, it is it is able to support. Multiple level of uh, of uh, parallelism. Uh, so, for example, by running uh, concurrently multiple ap applications or or uh, workflows, uh, or running uh, the same op operator on multiple data cubes or different files, and I'm going to sort of uh, parameter sweep uh, uh, operation, which is more uh, related to high 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 throughput computing, or running in parallel the same uh, operation on uh, uh, Multiple fragments of the of the data cube, and so this uh, the uh, 
the resulting runtime is able to be to be very very scalable. Uh, we have run some benchmarks and it uh, can scale efficiently until until at least uh, three three thousand cores and over uh, uh, one uh, one one hundred nodes. And the thanks and thanks to the uh, your analytics server is also able to support in memory analytics. Uh, so the data is can be uh, partitioned in uh, in uh, fragments and uh, and distributed. Uh, uh, hierarchically over over the over the storage system, uh, but from the end end user perspective, this uh, actually appears as a a single uh, immutable data cube. So it's uh, let's say the the data cube abstraction is, is able to uh, effectively uh, uh, hide the uh, the uh, the complexity of the of the data uh, fragmentation and uh, and distribution. Uh, the framework supports multiple uh, operators. Uh, Currently, we have more than 50 operators that have been uh, implemented, and this table shows uh, just a classification of some of the main uh, operators. Like, for example, there are features for uh, data import and export uh, from, uh, from, uh, from scientific data formats, like, for example, uh, NetCDF files, uh, supports for time series processing, data reduction, subsetting, but also metadata management uh, and data cube uh, ex exploration, as well as uh, some. Uh, metadata management and also and also uh, provenance uh, op operators. Uh, all those which are applied on uh, on um, on data are are, are mainly parallel, which has, whereas those applied on uh, metadata are, are mainly uh, sequential uh, operators. We'll see some ec uh, examples of of the operators during uh, tomorrow's demo. Ophelia provides also a wide set of uh, array-based primitives for data analytics. Uh, these are uh, around 100. Uh, the, the primitives are applied at the, at the level of the binary array stored in, uh, in each fragment, which are the chunks of this, of this data cube. These include uh, functional, uh, um, let's say, several, uh, several um, functions for, like, for um, mathematical uh, and, uh, st and uh, st statistical uh, uh, analysis as well as for predicate evaluation, uh, for uh, array manipulation, and, uh, and, and so on. Uh, this primitive is, uh, primitives consist of a uh, basic function that can be also nested uh, together in the, in the same um, query in order to uh, build more complex uh, expressions, like uh, shown in the, in the lower part of these this slides. Uh, this can be applied through the, uh, this can execute through the apply uh, operator. And in this example, it is applying uh, three uh, primitives uh, nested uh, uh, into each other. So we're running the uh, uh, box plot primitive on a sub uh, array, which is a subset of the of the input uh, the input data set. And uh, we'll also see tomorrow and then in the, in tomorrow's demo from CNC how to apply these, these primitives, for example, for masking or for uh, making uh, a linear re re regression from from data. Ophelia also provides uh, support for management and execution of, of complex workflows. Uh, it can be composed on, of, a several, uh, of several data analytics uh, operators. A workflow can be considered as a set of steps uh, which, are, which are carried out sequentially and, uh, and concurrently based on uh, a defined order which is uh, identified by the set of, of, uh, of dependencies. Uh, the figure shows some examples of the uh, workflows running in uh, Ophelia. These are composed by multiple circles, uh, which uh, are associated to each uh, data analytics uh, of, of operators, where the lines represent the uh, data or flow uh, the dependencies. The workflow manager is able to handle uh, complex structure of uh, of workflows in the in the um, in the shape of uh, data uh, directed acyclic uh, acyclic uh, graphs. And um, and this is also supported by the ECAS service. At the moment, it will not be part of uh, of tomorrow's training, but will be uh, addressed in, uh, in more uh, advanced uh, advanced uh, um, training courses. Uh, and then I move to the uh, Pi Ophidia uh, interface, which uh, allows to integrate the Ophidia uh, features into into Jupyter Notebook, and so that this can be easily exploited uh, through the uh, to the gas lab uh, uh, services, uh, so this uh, um, this can be used uh, to um, uh, 
run uh, the uh, to to build application in uh, in uh, in Python uh, in a uh, say in a in Python language and then run this on the on the server side on the HPC HPC infrastructure using uh, the uh, Opedia server. This model has been fu uh, fully integrated into in the e ECAS instance at uh, at CMCC and is able to handle uh, the full. Uh, the whole client server uh, in, in interaction from server uh, from the from the client request uh, to uh, uh, to re, re results uh, uh, access uh, it, it manages uh, remote data cube objects um, so that from the from the notebook they just appear as uh, as um, similar to the to the other Python object but they they actually they're just uh, linking to uh, re remote data objects which are stored on the on the server side and this can be as I said easily integrated into into Jupyter notebooks this just just an example of uh, what can be achieved uh, so this this is an notebook implemented with by Ophidia and just uh, go very quickly here this would be uh, an, uh, analyzed more uh, in detail in uh, in in tomorrow's uh, demo so like with the, with the first cell, we can uh, create a connection to the server side, and then we can import uh, data by specifying its, its path. And uh, thanks to the interface, we can uh, specify also the uh, data distribution and, uh, and, uh, and partitioning uh, arguments. So in this case, we would like to import this on four host uh, divided into 16 fragments. And then we can also specify the level of, of, uh, of priority that we would like to exploit. So by specifying the number of cores and number of, of threads, Used by this uh, by this processing, we can run different uh, operation, and then once uh, we have the final the final output, we can uh, then finally move the data from the server side to the client side. In this case, the uh, Jupyter notebook through this export uh, array uh, uh, feature. So, uh, if you're interested in uh, more practical. Donatello, Donatello, I do hate when the moderator tell me shut up. I do hate it. I don't want to do it to you. <laughs> Yeah, this is my last <laughs> By the way, uh, just just to conclude, yeah, if you're interested in getting more practical perspective, uh, what's offered by Egas Service at CPC and the framework, I encourage you to uh, apply and follow tomorrow's de de demo and, and hands-on, uh, which will be covered by my colleagues Fabrizio and uh, uh, Alessandra uh, tomorrow uh, afternoon. Uh, this session will mainly focus on the use of Biofidia module for uh, some parallel climate data management and data and and, uh, and data analysis. Uh, it also show some how this data can be used for uh, visualization through maps and uh, and uh, and plots. And so, an important thing is uh, after uh, uh, at, at the end of this session, so uh, please remember to uh, to register to uh, to uh, MCC service. Uh, if you're interested in the in the participating, uh, an important note is for those that won't be selected for the uh, hands-on. No worries, you can also you can also create an account. We're going to activate this after the uh, event uh, so that you can proceed in a sort of self self-paced mode. Uh, okay, so uh, thank you for your attention, and I hope to see uh, Spain as possible during the hands-on session.